What's going on, y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. And what a ridiculous night of hoops it was. When I say in the title that this was one of the craziest nights in NBA history, I'm not exaggerating. I can't think of a time where there was an 11-game slate with this many great games, games that came down to the wire, multiple overtime games, big comebacks, some of the already probable best performances of the season, and the year has just begun. The fact that we're getting this level of hoops already bodes pretty well for this being one of the best NBA seasons of all time. So I want to go ahead and break down all the crazy drama, big performances of this night. One of the craziest nights in probably all of recent NBA history. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Let's talk about it. Real quick though, if you're looking for a way to have some fun while you're waiting for your favorite NBA team's game to start, or maybe waiting for another one of these videos, you should go ahead and check out DraftKings Casino. DraftKings Casino is the number one ranked online casino app with over 300 real money games that vary from some classics to some DraftKings exclusives that give you a lot of ways to play without ever having to leave the house. If you head over to DraftKings and sign up using code CONE, that's C-O-N-E like my name, it'll be down below me here somewhere on the screen. You use that code when you sign up and they'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar up to $100 in credits. That's right, all you have to do is deposit a minimum $5 and they'll match that first deposit up to $100 in credits that you can use to play. Additionally, if DraftKings Casino isn't available in your state, you could also always go check out DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports, where you're able to build a lineup of your favorite players every single day and compete for cash prizes against other customers all season long, which is great with the NBA season just starting up. Not to mention that on top of this, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, so you can feel comfortable however you decide to play. So head over to DraftKings and sign up using code CONE to get that first deposit match so you can go ahead and get started. And I want to go ahead and thank DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Now let's go ahead and talk some hoops. When we talk about this night, I don't think there's any other place we can start than Nets Mavericks because over there we had a duel between two of the best scorers in the league, Luka Doncic and Cam Thomas, who continues to just ball out anytime they give him big minutes. He's unbelievable. Through the first two games of the season, he's one of the league's leading scorers. In this one, after being a monster in game one, nearly putting up 40, he had 30 points again, seven boards, two assists. It's starting to feel like not a coincidence that whenever Cam Thomas gets big minutes, he dominates. The Nets offense looks abysmal when he's not out there, and when he's out there, they look pretty competent. But he was going up against Luka Doncic, and the two of them, as you'd expect, we're dueling, and this game went really back and forth, but at the end of the game, the Mavericks needed somebody to step up, and it's of course going to be Luka, who decided to hit not one, not two, not three, but four straight threes to go ahead and give the Mavericks the win, and it was like he was purposely leveling up the difficulty, like he was playing horse against Cam Thomas or just the Nets in general, and he's like, okay, I need to hit crazier and crazier shots to win this one, as if he was playing some kind of trick shot three point contest out there. Unbelievable, specifically the 4-3, which was literally like he was trapped on the sideline and just threw up a hook shot three that happened to go in. After the game, they asked him like, did you think that was gonna go in? And he said, yes, I knew it had a shot. I don't believe it because I don't know how you make that three or have any type of confidence that's going to go in, but I guess that's Luka Doncic for you. And in all, he puts up 49 points, 10 boards, 7 assists, already a, almost a 50-point triple-double in the second game of the season from Luka, quickly building that MVP case if the Mavericks end up being any good. Speaking of ridiculous endings, Thunder Cavs also happened on the same night where the Thunder were up pretty big for the first half of the Cavs battled all the way back and with just two minutes left to go, the Cavs took a 10-point lead and it seems like at that point the Thunder were probably going to lose. They had run out of time and just ultimately didn't have enough for Donovan Mitchell who went ballistic in this game, dropping 43 points, 8 boards, 5 assists, 3 steals and two blocks continuing his career best season from last year into right now he just took over there was nothing the thunder could really do felt like a loss was inevitable but this team doesn't quit last year we're tied for the most double digit comebacks in the league did so again because Lou Dort hits a big three Shea hits a three Jalen Williams hits a three after struggling all game Chet Holmgren runs up in transition catch and shoot nails a three four straight threes to tie this game up then Lou Dort has a big finish around the rim he looked like LeBron finishing at the rim and some of these possessions which is wild to say he had one of probably his best offensive games I've ever seen then Jalen Williams knocks on a couple free throws puts the Thunder up four when Donovan Mitchell says I'm not done yet and hits an absurd pull up three that I feel like he just has almost made his signature at this point to cut it to one but the Thunder 
get the ball inbounded. Shea knocks down a couple free throws, and Shea gets a weirdly casual steal on the final possession of the game. To close this one out, the Thunder win coming back from down 10 with like two minutes to go. Unbelievable stuff. Shea finishes with 34 points, 11 boards, 4 assists, 5 steals, building up his own MVP case. Well, Chet Holmgren, going up against Evan Mobley, dominates. 15 points, 13 boards, 2 assists, a steal, and 7 blocks, setting a Thunder record for blocks by a rookie in a game. I think that's the most by anybody in a game so far this season. He had 3-3-7 blocks. The only time that happened last season was once with Brooke Lopez. He's a special rookie. The Thunder are surging, I guess you could say, 2-0 to start the season. And if we win on Sunday against the Nuggets, you're going to see a video about it. Also in the great performances category, over in Warriors versus Kings, it seemed like it was going to be a blowout. The Warriors were up 18 with six minutes left. And then De'Aaron Fox did his typical clutch player of the year thing and scored 17 straight points outside of just a single Sabonis free throw, which broke up a couple of the points. But I'm going to say it was 17 straight, and they brought it back all the way to a five-point game. All in all, he had, I think, like 20-some points in the fourth quarter. Just turned it up, finishing with 39 on 50% shooting. But on the other side, following Luka Doncic's own performance, saying, hey, I'm one of the best guards in the league, Steph said, okay, let me do my thing, and puts up 41 points, including a huge dagger three to close this one out. Shot 14 of 19 from the field. One of the best battles between guards that I've seen Seen in a while. I hope these two teams play again in a playoff series because it feels like every time they face off, it's just a classic. Either Steph's going off or De'Aaron Fox is being the most clutch player in hoops. Just unbelievable battle between these two guards that again, continues this night of ridiculous performances. But simultaneously throughout this night, we saw a few of the craziest attempts at choking away basketball game that I've personally ever seen. Bulls Raptors, Bulls down three late in the game after trailing for a majority. They were down huge at around halftime. They came back, brought this one close to Marta Rosen and won with the chance to go ahead and tie the game at the line. Bricks the free throw. It happens. Then they go ahead and foul Siakami, knocks down two free throws. They get the ball again to DeRozan, who pump fakes and gets fouled on a three. Again, going to the line. Chance to tie this one up. Hits the first, hits the second, bricks the third. And it was a lane violation. He knew it was going to be short, so he ran across the line too early. So the Raptors get a side inbounds. Pascal Siakam says, I want in on this, and gets an offensive foul. Bowling someone over. Bulls again get the ball, this time down one. So they get the ball to who else? DeMar DeRozan. And this time he pump fakes and gets fouled again. And this time he's going to the line. All he has to do is hit one to tie the game. And if he hits both, the Bulls are going to go ahead and win. Again, he hits the first, and somehow he misses the second one, sending this game to overtime just unbelievable stuff and then in overtime after so many attempts to win the game the bulls somehow pull it out because alex caruso hits a huge corner three to give them the win unbelievable stuff i thought the basketball gods would punish them for trying to throw the game away 30 different times but caruso ends up becoming the hero they win this one and this all comes after the bulls days ago after their first loss of the season to the thunder by 20 had a apparently heated team meeting so i guess in the team meeting they said okay Alex Crusoe is just going to come save us, I guess. But not to be outdone, the Knicks also tried to have a historic choke job. They're up seven with 51 seconds left. Give up a DeAndre Hunter three. Okay, it's fine. They're still up four. Not a lot of time left. Quentin Grimes, though, turns the ball over because Brunson passes it to him and he just like straight drops it out of bounds or not out of bounds. Goes to Trey Young. Trey Young ends up trying to run up the court. Grimes bowls him over. So now they have free throws and in a span of like 24 seconds. All of a sudden, it goes from a seven-point game to a two-point game. But the Knicks still have the ball. They get a bit of pressure in the backcourt. Brunson tries to pass it up to R.J. Barrett and just literally throws it out of bounds. So now the Hawks, after being down seven with 51 seconds left, have the ball with about one shot clock remaining, down two. They can go ahead and tie or win this one, and they get a great look. Trey Young throws a lob up to Clint Capello, pretty much wide open, and he just bricks the literal alley-oop. And... <laughs> the ball goes to the Knicks. They hit some free throws. The Knicks win this one after trying to throw it away. Like the Bulls, rewarded for an almost historic choke job. Brunson in this one was incredible. He had 31 points, another huge performance. RJ Barrett had 26. Again, just great performances across the board. Also in this one, Jalen Johnson had one of the dunk of the year candidates already, dunking on not one, but two Knicks at the same time. Meanwhile, Trey Young was abysmal. It's the second game in a row he's really struggled. Really rough start to the season for him. But we're not done yet, because let's go ahead and talk about some more clutch buckets. Rocket Spurs, 
Back and forth game, the Rockets leading for majority, but the Spurs claw their way back in the fourth quarter, making it two point game. With 35 seconds left, they foul Jabari Smith Jr. He goes to the line with a chance to hit one or two free throws, making a three point game or two possession game, which might end up closing this thing out. Instead, he misses both free throws. So the Spurs get the ball back down to Victor Wembanyama goes up the court and hits Jabari Smith Jr. with an absolutely disgusting move to get to the basket and finish a shot that probably only Vic could. He goes ahead, puts it in, sends this game to overtime, where in overtime, the Rockets just fell apart. A number of turnovers from Shangun, who ends up fouling out, just disjointed offense all over the place. Uh, Keldon Johnson, Devin Vassell, Zach Collins, Wemby, all make the Rockets pay for those turnovers. The Spurs win, Rockets fall to 0-2. Wemby puts up a 21-12 double-double with two steals, three blocks. That shot descended to OT. Ridiculous performance after struggling for a majority of the night. The Rockets just can't seem to put it together. Shangun had a good game. Van Vliet had a good one, but they just fell apart down the stretch. They were no match for this Spurs team that's looked pretty good to start the season. But we're not done yet when it comes to game tying and game winning shots because the Jazz had a lead over the Clippers for a majority of the game, but then Nick Batum starts hitting a three. Norman Powell hits one. Paul George hits a big pull up three, which Lowry Markkinen matches with a layup after literally 50 attempts at trying to put the ball back up and in. But then Paul George hits some free throws. They take a one point lead. And then Jordan Clarkson hits the most Jordan Clarkson shot of all time, an absurdly contested, difficult three that he drills because he's Jordan Clarkson. But the Clippers get the ball to Kawhi Leonard, one of the most clutch players in the league over the past few years. So naturally, Jordan Clarkson clamps him up. He takes a terrible three-point shot, but the board goes to Russ, who turns around, tries to shoot it up, and air balls. Clippers lose. It makes it a little bit worse for Russ that Nick Batum was pretty wide open next to him, but... There is not a lot of time left. I don't blame Russ for taking the shot. The air ball is rough. Uh, one thing I will note that was one of the funnier parts, I guess, of the end of this game is when Russ takes the shot, you can see in the background, uh, Kawhi Leonard literally fell to his knees out there on the court, which is wild for a second game of the season. Not the best moment for me as a Russell Westbrook fan. Then to wrap up this absurd night of hoops, we had a couple of other fun performances in some other games. Uh, Derek White went bald and suddenly became Michael Jordan out there dominating the Heat. 28 points, three assists, three blocks, this huge chase down block on Jimmy Butler. Big three towards the end of the game. Unbelievable stuff from Derek White, who I was already high on going into the season. I feel like he's one of the most underrated players in the league. Incredible defender. Offensive potential is way higher than people realize. And they needed that because the Heat did their typical thing and just made the game way closer than maybe it should have. Uh, Drew Smith, maybe the new Celtics killer, went out there, had nine points with three threes, three steals. I saw Celtics fans tweeting out pictures of Drew Smith saying, who is this? Why is he destroying my favorite team? So we'll probably see him put up like 20 points per game on 55% shooting against the Celtics in some playoff series throughout this year. Uh, Jalen Brown hits a three-point dagger, 18 seconds left. And also, Bam Adebayo completely dunked on Chris Ups Porzingis in this one. There was also Nuggets Grizzlies, which didn't have anything too crazy happen, except for Derrick Rose dropping 10 fourth quarter points to nearly single-handedly bring the Grizzlies back from the brink of loss. They did end up losing because Jokic and Jamal Murray hit a couple of threes that were huge. But seeing Derrick Rose do that kind of vintage stuff taking over after really not playing last year was kind of crazy. Magic Trailblazers, nothing too much happening in this one. The Blazers brought it a bit back towards the end, but the Magic felt like they were kind of in control for a majority of this game. And then Hornets Pistons was the only double digit loss of the entire night, which is absurd on an 11 game slate. Uh, Jalen Duran, Jay Nivey dominated. Duran had 14 and 17. Asar Thompson had 6, 13 and 6. One of the most impactful non scoring rookies that I've seen in quite some time. Also, shout out to Brandon Miller. Even in the loss, good game with 17 points and just under 50% shooting. Been a good start to his season so far. So, to recap, Luca, near 50 point triple double. Cam Thomas, 30 point game continuing his rise. Shea and Chet leading the Thunder to a big comeback victory with Chet having seven blocks, a Thunder rookie record in his second game of his career and they had to do so against Donovan Mitchell, who had 43 points of his own. The Bulls trying to choke away a million gifted opportunities to win only for Caruso to actually do so. You had Victor Wembanyama dominating against the Rockets at the end of the game, sending it to OT. You had the Knicks, like the Bulls, trying to choke the game away, this time through turnovers. Derek White becoming LeBron against the Heat. Jordan Clarkson hitting a crazy game winner to then clamp up Kawhi Leonard afterwards to give the Jazz a win after Russ airballs the game-winning shot. The Warriors and Kings, Steph and De'Aaron Fox dueling against each other after Fox just signed with Curry Brand like two days ago. Derrick Rose going off in the Nuggets game. You had some good performances in Magic Trailblazers, Hornets, Pistons. One double-digit loss, a couple of overtime games. Everything else came down to the wire. 
unbelievable night of hoops. It was so much fun to watch. I've got a million favorite moments. Let me know what your favorite one was down below in the comments. Also, what's one of your biggest takeaways from these first few days of the season? Who's impressed you? Who's been disappointing? And everything in between. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Hopefully we get a night of hoops again like this at some point soon, but it might take some time to truly match the insanity that was this night. I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Rewind, say it back.